Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year. And let's get into it. So we have the part two. We are going to have probably like five parts because this is a very long subject. And I don't want these videos to be actually too long. Uh, but yeah, we have part two of the complete guide on BVR. So today we're going to talk about radar modes. Very complex subject. I'm not going to get too much into the real life thing, just on the game for you to actually help you um, play better. But first of all, uh, make sure to watch part one. I will leave it right here. And also, another thing that I think I forgot to mention, uh, there is one mode that I forgot to mention on the first part of the video. One key bind, as you see, search mode. I use these ones. And then you can basically change the way that the scan works. As you see, uh, a more narrow one, a more broader one. Even in the acquire modes for um, within visual range, you can change it, as you see. So, yeah, very important subject. But, first of all, let's go for the explanation on a mind map that, that I actually did. So here I mounted this mind map. I know it's kind of weird, but it is the way easier way to explain these amount of raider modes because there is a lot of them so let's talk about them first of all let's talk about the bvr modes okay we have two types of bvr modes in the game right now in the future we will have more we will have uh, electronic scanned array raiders but for now we only have the normal mechanical pull stopper and normal mechanical raiders without the pull stopper um filtering right one thing that you need to know is that normal raiders will not have any type of ground clutter filtering. Or, I mean, there is one raider specifically that I will talk about that it has some form of raider, uh, a ground clutter like uh, cleanup, but it's not as good as pull stopper. Pull stopper will completely filter 100% of the ground clutter. So these are the main things, okay? Then let's talk about the normal ones. First of all, the search modes. We're going to use the search, the tracking and stuff. We're going to talk about it later. So for search of the target, you have the normal BVR that you normally have. And then you have two modes. You normally have the normal and the low altitude one. The low altitude one is only used on the MiG-23s. Okay, only in the MiG-23s. So they are normally... Uh, divided like this, they are in the game, in the radar scope, they will have this message, so search, just search, it means that it's in the normal without pull stopper, search mode of the normal radar, and then if it's the low altitude or look down basically mode, uh, it is going to be just search LD or look down, uh, it is not going to have any type of pull stopper filtering, but it will have this thing right here. I will be showing these two in the game for you. The first one is good for any target attitude. So the, the target is in a head-on, in a perpendicular flight, going away from you, anything like that. These modes are amazing. Both of them are very good for that. But the cons on it is that it has a lot of ground clutter. A lot of cl ground clutter. Uh, on the look-down mode of the search, you can actually have a bit of ground clutter resistance, uh, like basically it can filter a little bit of ground clutter, but not too much, but it has a big problem compared to the other ones, which is the lower range, um, and it has quite a bit still of ground clutter. So it's a older way, cheaper way to deal with ground clutter, but it is not as good a pull stopper. So let's show these two modes for you guys. So here we are in the MiG-23. One thing that you have to notice is that for example, here we have the normal radar mode, so normal search, as you see, SRC. As you see, a lot of ground clutter, a lot of ground clutter, but it is good at any type of um, aspect. So as you see here, the target is running away from me, and I can still uh, detect it, as you're going to see right here, and still lock it fairly quickly. Quickly, You have uh, longer distances in the case of the MiG-23 right here, but also you have the search look down, as you see, uh, it tends to filter a little bit of the ground clutter. As you see, filters a little bit. See how much in this normal search is just a little bit more, right? But it's not by much, and the range is decreased with this. So if you are flying high, above 2000 meters, just use the normal search. If you're going to look down, 
use the normal search look down, okay? Uh, another thing that you have to consider on specifically the MiG-23's 23's radar is that below the 2000 meter mark, kind of, it depends on the altitude, depends on, on many things, depends on the map, it will automatically change for the two other modes, the normal search mode for low altitudes here as well. It also has a decrease in range and it also um, has ground clutter, but then you have the search MTI that I'm going to uh, show to you guys in the Pulse Doppler uh, videos, but uh, part of the video. But as you see, um, in MTI, if I pass certain altitude, it automatically changes for the high altitude mode. So you have four modes, two for low altitude, two for high altitude, and they uh, go between each other from one to, to the other automatically depending on the altitude that you are okay remember that so you cannot use mti for example at higher altitudes okay so normal search we have that on the f5e on the mig 21 on the mig 23 on the f4e many aircraft have these even like no, most of the aircraft actually uh there is only two aircraft that don't have this uh the yak 41 and the mig 29s uh they are fully pulse doppler radars but all the other raiders, uh, like search raiders, BVI raiders, will have the normal search modes for you to actually try to get uh, some locks, okay? Normally, it's used also for older raiders uh, that basically you use as a secondary measure uh, when you have a certain mode on a pull stopper that I'm going to tell you later. But these are the normal modes. So good for any particular target, um, but they need to... Uh, you need to be careful with the ground clutter. That's pretty much it. Then we go for the pulse Doppler modes. This is where the fun begins, actually. Uh, we have four sub-modes here. We have the normal pulse Doppler, the pulse Doppler velocity, track while scan, and also moving target indication. We have these four modes, and you will use them depending on the aircraft that you fly. Normal pulse Doppler, you have to think about it that it is just... Use, it is using the pulse Doppler effect, the Doppler effect with the pulse Doppler reader to actually filter out 100% of the ground clutter. So none of these have ground clutter, okay? But you also have two basically sub modes on the normal pulse Doppler mode. So it is going to be a search pulse Doppler, as you see, and then a search pulse Doppler HDM, which means that it is a high PRF mode. High PRF mode means basically it's a high pulse repetition frequency. And then the normal one, search pulse stopper, will be medium PRF mode or medium pulse repetition frequency. It's basically the repetition frequency that the radar is emitting the signals, okay? High PRF is good for upcoming targets. So 12 o'clock coming hot for you, head on pass, and medium PRF is normally better for an OWASPIT kind of situation. That's what I mean. Um, normally, raiders that have high PRF, older raiders normally only have pull stopper with high PRF, and then when a target is trying to fly perpendicular to you or trying to get away from you, you will go back to the normal modes because the high PRF modes are really bad at that. Uh, the pros of the high PRF modes are, uh, of course, no ground clutter, but it has also a greater range than the normal pull stoppers in head-ons, okay? Of course, the cons are greater blind speeds. Blind speeds mean basically that they are only good at head-ons. If the target tries to fly away from you, the target tries to go perpendicular to you, uh, it will, the radar basically will not detect the target. And the medium PRF will normally be just search pull stopper in the game, or just SRCPD. This is going to be the high PRF, SRCPD HDN. Um, have the pros of no ground clutter, obviously. Lower blind speed, so they're better than the HDN on the sense of trying to get locks from different types of uh, perpendicular targets or not. But it has a lower range. Okay, so on a, uh, on a, on a head don't pass, it's always good to use the uh, HDN on a all, all the other situations, it's better to use uh, the pull stopper. I normally use normal pull stopper in the aircraft below like 30 kilometers. Always use the medium PRF because the advantage of the higher range of the high PRF will be none because you already are detecting it with the high medium PRF. So if you are detecting with the medium PRF, 
ignore the high PRF. That's basically what it is in the MiG-29, specifically because it is one of the only Raiders that have, and the Zook one on the Yak, that have uh, the ability to use the two of them. Normally, Mirage, uh, for example, the F-14, they only have the HDN, and the other ones, for example, the F-16, and I think the Vegan and others, uh, they only have the medium PRF. So it depends on the Raider, right? The Russian ones are the only ones that normally can do both. Uh, so let's test it out on the MiG and other aircraft, just to make sure you understand it. So here we are in the MiG-29. As you see on the radar scope there, Surge Pulse Doppler. This is the medium frequency, okay? The pulse repetition frequency. So these are good for perpendicular targets, as you see over here. Oh, didn't manage to get a lock there, but you managed to see how it works. It, of course, it has blind speeds, but they're lower than the HDN. The HDNs are better for head-ons. As you see, I cannot even detect the target if it's flying at a lower altitude. I, sometimes I can, sometimes, I mean, it's so close that it will actually work, but, um, and it changed it for the pull stopper for some reason. But anyway, this is going to be better for the search pull stopper HDN uh, for the head-ons, okay? So HDN, remember that it's a head-on. Uh, let me show to you guys again. I was in the wrong mode before. As you see, you cannot detect it because even it has a minimum range, as you see right there, of around 9 kilometers. The target needs to be at 9 kilometers to be even able to be detected uh, for the target. As you see, you cannot even, like, you cannot do anything. It automatically changes for the tracking pulse doppler, as you see, which is the normal one. But uh, you will not be able to detect targets flying away from you normally or perpendicular to you while using this mode. And the normal pull stopper, as you see, of course, it's just for detecting targets that are flying. Uh, for example, this target here that it's trying to run away from you. Or targets that are a lower altitude uh, or lower distance than 30 kilometers or so. Because as I said, the normal HDN will not um, have the advantage anymore. So yeah, just use the normal mode. So remember, HDN for head-ons normal for everything else uh long range head-ons okay below 30 kilometers use the normal uh, surge pull stop for example here we have another um example we have the f-14 the f-14 only has all the the, the pull stopper modes as you see are hdn so it's not very good for targets that are trying to uh, avoid you basically so you have the normal search so uh, in an f-14 for example once you detect a target that and it loses it because you're blind, as you see, for example, right here, I'm completely blind with the search pull stopper HDN, you change for the normal search and then you can get a lock. These are uh, the, the reasons why they add these normal search modes for these raiders, for when the target is actually trying to run away from you or basically just try to avoid you in cer certain kind of ways, for example, notching and stuff that we're going to talk about in a future video. But just for you to know that uh, most of the Raiders, uh, as I said, the F-14, the Mirage 2000, uh, they only have the HDM. And then the F-16, the Vegan and others, they have the normal medium PRF. The only ones that have both are the Soviet ones, okay? Um, I'm going to show to you uh, the rest of it, uh, but basically this is it. So remember again, search pull stop to HDM, head on. Remember that, head on. That's why you're not being able to detect a target that it's close to you, like this MiG, for example because the HDN has a very high uh, blind speed. Okay, blind speeds are basically speeds that the target is, uh, where the target is basically filtering out uh, together with the ground clutter, together with everything else. Remember, if you're going to use the normal search for when this is happening, of course, it has ground clutter, as you see on the radar scope. Then we have pulse doppler velocity. It is basically the same as the normal pulse doppler, but it has a different basically scale so instead of actually sh showing you the distance of the target it will show you the speed of the target which can be helpful or can be useless depending on the situation in the game i think i've tried to find any other aircraft that has different modes but all the aircraft that use pull stopper velocity use high prf normally the f4 um, the f4s they use the apg 59 or the f14 so yeah, pull stop the velocity, same thing as the normal, but using speed instead of um, 
instead of distance on the scale. So high PIF. So yeah, in the game, it will be like this, SRC, PDV, HDN. So search, pull stop their velocity, head on. So yeah, uh, the pros and cons, obviously no ground clutter, obviously as any other pull stopper mode. Uh, it has a greater range than the normal uh, median PRFs, right? Uh, great for head-ons. Uh, and it tells you the speed of the approaching target. That can be very helpful sometimes to actually identify a target that is more uh, dangerous than others because they have your the nose of their aircraft pointed towards you. Uh, so it's a way for you to identify targets. I normally never use these unless I'm obliged to. For example, in the... Uh, F4s, right, on the PG-59, it's the only pulse doppler uh, version of that radar, so yeah, uh, it's alright, I guess, but it's not the greatest thing ever. The cons are no range indication, so you cannot have a range indication unless you lock the target um, to actually fire the missile and to see if the target is actually close enough for you to fire the missile. And obviously being an HDN or a high PRF mode, uh, it has a large blind speed. So let's take a look on the game. Uh, the F-14 is one that has that. Uh, so as you see, I'm changing the modes here. Search, push, stopper, velocity, HDN. So as you see right there, it doesn't have ground clutter, but that basically blob of green thing there, it's basically the blind speeds. If you take a look on the scale right up there, it says 7,380 kilometers per hour and minus 1,476 kilometers per hour. These are the speeds that you can actually uh, get um, a detection on. If the target is in these speeds, you will detect it. But if it is on the middle here, close to zero, it will not be detected. As you see, the blind speeds are pretty amazing. So, of course, the target is being detected. Obviously, it's being detected by the radar. But uh, due to the fact of filtering everything that it's standing still, as all post up there, though, it will think that that thing is almost at close to zero speed relative to you and filter out as well. Remember, the lower the speed that you have, let me lower the speed over here, but the lower the speed that you have, the lower the blind speeds are, as you see over there on the radar scope. So the faster you go, the higher the blind speeds are because the radar has problems. These are very old radars, remember? they have troubles dealing with uh, relative speeds, higher speeds, right? So the faster you go, the blind speeds will be increased. Uh, and remember, the target can be detected with this um, from a cold aspect, as you see, for example, here. But the target needs to be fast, man. As you see, it needs to be faster than you. Or you need to be approaching it. So if the target is like in the same speed, you will not be detecting the target as you see right there. If he is actually faster than you, let me just lower the airspeed here to show to you. Come on, he's almost at the same speed as I, as I am. Let me try to do with the other one. Well, you get the idea, right? Uh, if he gets farther away from you, uh, you will get the detection if he gets the same speed as you see right there. It's getting detected because it's faster than me, okay? Uh, as I said, only the F4s and the F14s have that. So let's get back to the other modes. Then we have track while scan. Uh, so this mode is actually a very different mode. It is a mode that not only it is actually kind of locking the target, but not at the same time. It is as it is known as a soft lock, basically. It's looking at the target, measuring the distance very quickly, and then it goes uh, on the scan zone. So while it's trying to track something, it is also continue to scan the area of the target, right? So this is very helpful to actually have a more, uh, a little bit more information because you can actually have information like speed of the target and with the computer of the aircraft, it calculates where it's heading and the speed of it and gives you a little bit more information like it is actually locking the target but not giving a lot of information that the missile can actually track. Um, this can be used with the Phoenix uh, to actually be able to track a target uh, and give information to the missile to actually go near the target 
but in a general sense, uh, it is more for you to actually know where the targets are uh, or a specific target that you want to attack, but uh, while keeping uh, a scan on the area to see if there is anything else. Of course, as the normal one, you have high PIF and medium PIF being in the game TWS HDN or just TWS. Uh, on the high PIF, obviously no ground clutter as well as in the medium PIF, greater range on the high PIF, better for head-ons, and it can also loft, uh, soft lock the targets while keep scanning, but the, the cons obviously higher um, blind speeds due to the higher repetition frequency here as well. Uh, depending on the, ra the radar, it takes a time takes time to actually um, to update, uh, so that it, it's not that precise as well. Same goes for this this one, but just using medium PRF, uh, so we can it lower blind speeds than this one, no ground clutter, uh, lower range in the high PRF mode, uh, but it can also do the same, so soft locks uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, on the MiG-29, for example, you can use both. Uh, on the F-14, you can only use TWS HDN, for example. So as you see, for example, here we have HD at TWS HDN, and I'm going to show to you on the MiG-29. So here we have the option, for example, TWS, normal TWS, medium pulse, pulse repetition frequency, and then TWS HDN for head-ons as well. So for example, uh, let me turn around, and my god, they buffed this flight model. For example, the target is kind of notching me here, so I cannot detect it with normal. And here I can detect it. And it takes a while to update, as you see. But it's kind of soft locking the target, giving a little bit of information about the target. Kind of where it is, kind of the speed of the target, everything like that. So yeah, it's a mode that really helps you um, with that. And of course, in the... Um, in this mode, you can actually just click to lock the button and go directly to the tracking. So, for example, here, I can try to just lock the target. So, we will choose the target there. And if I just click the, the lock button, of course, he lost there. Uh, he's flying too low, but uh, you can just click the lock button and it will try to lock the target and then you can fire a missile. So, pretty fun. And with the Phoenix, you can use it to just fire the missile. You just click the button without the lock. For example, here uh, you have the TWS HDN. Let's see if I can get a, a detection there. It's hard to get detections over here. I have to get some speed and some distance from these. So as you see, for example, here I'm just soft locking him. I'm not actually locking, so I'm just selecting the target right there. I can warm it up the missile and fire the missile and it will track their having uh, updates from the INS uh, or the data link from the data link system of the F-14 is actually detecting the target having some information from the target and giving the missile a little bit of that information so while it continues to scan um, the other airspace or basically the, the airspace itself I lost the lock Right, right there because of the notching uh, but then the missile is already close enough so that it can actually use its own radar in the case of being a Fox 3 missile right so yeah pretty useful and then we have been the, 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 the last basically mode of radar um, as far as I know only the Mirage F1 and the MiG-23 have this mode which is the moving target indication it is a cheaper version of the Pulse Doppler uses a older technology it is useful, but it has a lot of cons. So yeah, uh, in, in real life, it was cheaper. Uh, it has no ground clutter, basically, uh, but it can only used, be used in lower altitudes, but it depends on the aircraft, okay? It is uh, mentioned as search. It's not MTI, it's like search uh, MTI. And the biggest cons are the large blind speeds. Uh, so it is a kind of a problematic radar on that sense, mode radar, uh, radar mode. Uh, not that good for range as well, the radar is, it is very limited on that, and it has no AFF, so we, all of these, depending on target, they can have some identification of uh, friendly or foe. Uh, remember that this, I think on the F-14 it has it, I have to check, but on the APG-59, I don't think he has it as well, so be aware of that, you will fire at friendlies as well. 
So some of these have and some of these don't. But the search MTI, it always doesn't have um, that, okay? So lower altitude only can be used in lower altitudes. The Mirage, it's a little bit higher, uh, but it's not by much. It's like four, th five, a little bit more, I think seven or eight, I don't know, thousand meters. Uh, but it's not meant for high altitude and because it needs the sample of ground clutter to actually filter out. It's a little bit different uh, in the way that it works in real life. So yeah, I'm not gonna get too much into that. The video is already too long. So yeah, this is the last um, BVR mode, basically. So we are taking off here on the test flight. And as you see on the MLD, no ground clutter whatsoever. The scan is always a very tiny one. Uh, and the range is very limited. It's around 20 kilometers, okay? so. Not very useful, to be honest, only if you are really flying really low to the ground. Normally, I just use the normal search here. Uh, but as you see, it can detect targets, but it is easy to notch as well. Let's see. Yeah, see? Already lost the lock. So it is a problematic one. Uh, not that useful, but uh, it is there to help you when you are in lower altitudes like this. Remember, the Mirage F1 also has this. And these are all the BVR modes, okay? Each aircraft that you use will have a different mode. So get um, close to that. You can normally see these things on the X-ray on the hangar. So for example, here we are, for example, here, for example, a look down head on for, it means basically that it is the HDN modes, the high PRF modes, look down aspects in normally the medium PRF, uh, TWS, you already know what it is. BVR mode, it means that it can do the search. Acquire mode, it means that it can do the dogfights mode that we're going to talk about. So you can uh, check on it here. For example, the F-16, it doesn't have a look down head on because it doesn't have the HDN modes. All, all it has is the look down aspect because it's the median PIF and then look up, which is the normal um, search mode without pull stopper. Uh, the, um, for example, the F-14, it has look down head on and no look down all aspect because it only has the HDN and then the normal search. If you go to an F4E, for example, it only has, uh, basically has nothing, which means that it is only a look up radar. It doesn't have any pull stopper. So all the radars that you will look, they have this type of thing. Mirage look down head on means that it has HDN, look up means that it has normal search. Um, Let's see, the vegan has look down all aspects, so normal medium PRF uh, pull stopper and look up, so normal normal search. So all of these radars, they have their own modes. The only one that have look down head on and look down all aspects are the MiG 29s and also the Yak 41, as you see over here, head on and all aspect. Uh, in aircraft, for example, as the MLD, it has look down all aspect, which is the normal ones, the MTI, and then it has look up as well. So it depends on the radar. You can check it out. What modes does he have it there? Okay. Then we have the other minor modes that are normally used. Uh, first of all, we have the tracking mode. So while you are going to select a target and try to lock it, once you lock it, you will have the tracking mode. Normally, it's a TRK plus the mode that you used before. So if you're trying to search a target with uh, a medium PIF, it will just be tracking. If you are using the high PIF, the HDN, it will be tracking HDN or TRK HDN. So it depends. If you use the IRST that we're going to talk about, it will be IRST tracking and HMS, uh, just tracking overall. So it depends on the mode that you are using. If it's high PIF or normal PIF, pull stopper or not, it will be tracking plus that thing. If it's just tracking, it will be just the normal modes, tracking plus PD, normal median PRFs, uh, and so on and so on. So for example here, tracking pull stopper. So it's tracking the target so that I can get a lock, proper lock with the missile and fire the missile. Okay, so it's uh, a proper way to uh, just kill a target with a semi-active missile, for example. Uh, here we have, um, you can, you cannot change it. Uh, let me change. Let me change it. For example, the oh, oh my God, too many modes. For example, track IR with the IRST, track boost Doppler with the normal one, 
if you detect it with the HDN, you can use the HDN as well. I cannot use it right here, but you get the idea. The tracking mode means that you are tracking and only tracking that target. It means that you are focusing all the energy of the radar on one singular target, okay? Making uh, enough information, enough uh, radiation bouncing back from that aircraft to guide the missile to that. Okay, pretty cool, right? And while we are talking about that, we have the infrared search and track, IRST. Some aircraft like the F-8s, uh, the MiG-23s, the MiG-29s, uh, they have an infrared search and track. Normally it's called just IRST in-game and it uses infrared to detect and track a target. Cannot be used for radar missiles, okay? It will be used for search but and tracking as well, but not be able to actually track any missiles. So you normally go to search IR, as you see, if you haven't had the key binds, go check the first video and you see how it's doing a search pattern there because it is basically a radar. Same, goes, uh, same thing as a radar, but instead of using radiation, it's actually using infrared uh, um, signature, right? So for example, if I put it right there to track the target, it is detecting the target in the middle there. See? Yeah, now it's not, but... And still you can do the tracking and you can slave the missiles to it, as you see. So, for example, the missile is warmed up. If you lock the target, it will go directly there in the missile. So, pretty cool, right? And the, the good part about this is that it doesn't matter if the target actually uses flares, it will maintain on the target itself. And the last thing, finally, because this video is already too long, we have the dogfight modes. Dogfight modes are made for you to actually get locks quicker uh, than in the normal, uh, normal search mode. So instead of using the radar screen to actually find the target, dogfight modes will basically mean that you are within visual range, you can call it, uh, it also why it's one of the, the types of that. Uh, you can basically get a point and lock target um, or point and lock mode to just point to the target and get a lock. Normally we have two of them. We have the within visual range modes and the helmet mounted. Uh, within visual range, it will be basically acquire or ACM, it will be just like that, acquirement, acquirement, and blinking to try to lock. Once the target is in the middle of the square, it will automatically track the target. Same as uh, just before the tracking mode for the BVR, but uh, basically using uh, within visual range. So, of course, you can use it with full stop there and IRST and stuff. Um, it depends on the mode that you're using uh, before that medium PRF, higher PRF, doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah, it can have many different types of sizes and shapes as well. For example, here uh, in the MiG-29, uh, we have just a normal vertical one. As you see, you cannot change it from there. But in other ones, you will have other modes. I will show to you guys in uh, later. And obviously, we have also this, the helmet mounted HMS uh, plus the mode that you are using, IRST or radar tracking mode or whatever. And you're basically using the helmet to actually get the same effect that you want from this. So let me show to you guys in some of these aircrafts what these two modes can do. So you will be on the normal mode here. The acquire mode will be just blinking like that. If the target gets in the middle of that, it will automatically lock. Automatically locking. And also in the helmet mounted, you have this. Then you have to point to the target and click the lock button. This is not automatic. And then you will get a lock as well. Uh, so these are the two modes that you can use. Um, and also you can use the lead indicators, obviously. I have a video on that as well. Many aircraft have different modes like this. So for example, the MiGs, they have the helmet mounted display, but they only have one normal within visual range mode. Uh, in the F-16, we have others, for example. In the Mirage, we have others in the F-14. Any of it, these aircraft have others. So for example, here we are just uh, in the normal square. If you click the button of changing the, uh, the mode, this one, again, the same that I told you guys before, uh, it's this one, search mode. It will change for a different type of square. For example, here is for a dogfight when you are trying to pull your nose to the target. And then a bigger 
uh, square, for example. So it has different modes for you to actually do this. Uh, the helmet mounted is basically the same, only uh, the MiG-29s, the AK-41, and the F-4J and F-4S have it. So if you have one of these aircraft, you can use the Raider slaved to the helmet mounted display using uh, this button normally. Let me show to you uh, the beyond within visual range. If you click once, you will go to the to the normal and then in those aircraft if you click again it will go to the helmet mounted display okay so these are the radar modes that you need to worry about i know i'm sorry a very very long video but i tried to explain everything like that and this was part two and the part three we are going to cover the tactics and how to use them all of these modes in an actual combat okay i hope you enjoyed sorry to be too long but i tried to explain as much as possible for you to understand all the radar modes in the game okay i see you guys on next one make sure to subscribe it does take a lot of effort to do this video so make sure to subscribe to help out click the like button and i see you guys on the next one bye guys see you